we welcome you to this night, Monday, Thursday, into Good Friday, as we prepare ourselves during Holy Week for the journey that Christ makes on our behalf through the torture, through the death. So we have this service so that when we gather on Easter Sunday morning, the resurrection becomes more real for all of us. So this is a somber service, one that brings us closer to Christ as we gather together. Let us begin with our call to worship. Return to the Lord, God of all mercies, for a feast of love has been prepared. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt the name of God together. Let us continue in worship with an upper room that our Lord prepare, verses 1 and 2. On this solemn night, we are invited by God to confess our sins. So let us join together confessing our sins. I will lead us in a spoken prayer, and then there will be a time of silence. Let us pray and confess our sins to God through Christ. Merciful God, we have not loved you with all of our heart and mind and strength and soul. We have not loved our neighbors as you have taught us. We have not accepted your grace. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for forgiveness. Amen. We continue in worship, turning to the scriptures. We turn now to the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. As Jesus faced the torture and the disobedience against him and people close to him abandoning him. He knew all that was going to happen. And this is the Lord's response to all of that, which we read from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around them. 
He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, Jesus said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do these. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Holy God, from the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image and made a covenant with us to always be our God. You blessed us with your Son, Jesus Christ, who emptied himself so that we might have life. Remembering his sacrifice, we offer ourselves up to catch a glimpse of his love for us so that we can show love for others. In his name we pray. Amen. We're now moving into our time of communion. And so you are invited to have your own bread and your own juice or wine and participate in the service of Holy Communion at this time. On that night when he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his disciples, knowing full well that one of them was going to betray him. But he gathered with them, and according to John, washed their feet. And according to all the Gospels, he gathered and broke bread with them. He broke bread and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. You are invited to take and eat of the bread of life. And at the conclusion that night, Jesus shared a cup. He said, this cup is a sign of a new promise, a new covenant that I'm making. So that as often as we eat of the bread and drink from the cup, we proclaim our Lord's life, death, and resurrection until he comes to be with us once again. Friends, you are invited to take from the cup of salvation. At this time, we're going to move into our Good Friday Tenebrae time. This is the time when we are invited to hear the words recorded from the Gospels of the last hours of Jesus' life. We gather and remember so that it can remind us of what the resurrection really is all about. It was two days before the Passover, 
and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. The religious leaders who collaborated with the Roman occupation were conspiring against Jesus. They had gathered in the palace of Caiaphas, the high priest. This man had received the high priesthood at the hand of Valerius Gratus, the former Roman governor, and now retained the office under Pontius Pilate. They were all planning to arrest and destroy Jesus quietly so as to avoid a popular revolt among the Jews. At this time, Jesus was lodging at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. While he was there, a woman approached and anointed him from an alabaster jar of pure nard. When his disciples saw the act, they were outraged. Why this waste, they demanded. Such costly ointment might have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. Jesus responded, Why do you bother this woman? The poor are always with you. Indeed, I tell you that, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be told in her memory. Then one of the twelve named Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What will you give me if I deliver Jesus to you for the governor? When they heard the offer, they were glad and promised Judas thirty pieces of silver. From that hour he sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. At the beginning of the feast, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, the disciples of Jesus approached him and asked, Where do you wish us to prepare the Paschal meal? Jesus took two of his disciples and instructed them, Go into the city, and you will see there a man carrying a water jar. He will show you a suitable place. The two did as Jesus commanded. They entered the city where they found the man with the water jar who brought them to a large upper room. When evening had come, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you truly that one of you is going to betray me. The disciples were stunned with grief and began to protest one after the other. Surely not I. Jesus replied, The betrayer is one of you, dipping his hand in the dish with me. The Son of Man is fulfilling scripture. But woe to the one whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Then Judas slipped out into the night. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. After reciting the blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then taking the cup with the traditional blessing, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, This is my blood of the covenant which is being shed for many. I tell you in truth that I shall not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the day that I drink it fresh in the kingdom of God. Then, having sung a hymn, they left the city for the Mount of Olives. As they walked, Jesus said to his disciples, You will all desert me this very night. So it is written in the prophet Zechariah, Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Then Peter protested, Though all desert, I will remain by you. Jesus replied, I tell you truly that in this very night, before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. Still, Peter maintained, even though I must die with you, I will never deny you. And so declared all the disciples.
Jesus halted at an olive grove called Gethsemane. Then going apart with Peter, James, and John, he left them on watch and continued a little farther alone. There he fell on his face in anguished prayer. Soon he returned to the three on watch and found them sleeping. Rousing them, he asked Peter, Could you not watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray that you are not put to the test, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went apart in troubled prayer, and again he returned to find the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. The third time Jesus withdrew to pray, and a third time he found the disciples sleeping. Then Jesus said, Sleep on and finish your rest. Now is the time for the Son of Man to deliver, to be delivered into the hands of sinners. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus had not finished speaking before Judas, one of his own disciples, arrived with a group of Roman soldiers and other armed men from the temple. Now the betrayer had arranged with the authorities for a sign and had said, The man whom I kiss is the one you want. In accord with this arrangement, Judas went directly to Jesus and cried out, Greetings, Master. Then he gave him the kiss. Jesus responded, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Immediately the soldiers laid hands on Jesus and held him fast. Then one of the disciples with Jesus drew his sword and cut off an ear from the slave of the high priest. But Jesus said to him, Sheathe your sword. All who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you not know that I can call upon my Father and he will respond at once with more than twelve legions of angels? Then turning to the mob, Jesus continued, Have you come for me as against a rebel bandit with swords and clubs? Why did you not seize me in the temple where I sat teaching by day? Were you so afraid of the Jewish people that you must come for me by night? Nevertheless, your actions were fulfilling the words of the prophets. Then all of the disciples forsook him and fled. Those who had seized Jesus brought him to Caiaphas, whom the Romans had made a high priest. Peter followed at a distance as far as the courtyard. There he sat with the attendants and warmed himself by the fire. The high priest had gathered his whole council, and they began to arrange the case against Jesus, which they would present to Pontius Pilate, the governor. The charge was that Jesus claimed to be king of the Jews, and they brought in many false witnesses but to no avail. Finally, two came forward and testified. We heard this man say, I will tear down this temple made with hands and within three days build another not made with hands. The testimony was evidence that Jesus claimed an authority over temple affairs which traditionally belonged only to the rulers of Israel. And in those days, Israel was ruled from Rome. Yet even these witnesses were unable to agree on their testimony. Finally, Caiaphas stood up and examined Jesus directly. Have you no answer to these charges? demanded the high priest. Jesus remained silent and answered nothing. 
Then the high priest put the question of kingship in terms of the royal titles, anointed and son of God. Are you the anointed one, the son of the blessed? He probed. Jesus answered, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man seated on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. The high priest turned and said, What need have we of witnesses? He has condemned himself. They all concurred that Jesus was indeed worthy of death. Then those holding Jesus began to spit on him. They covered his face and were sticking him as they taunted him and said, O anointed one, prophesy who it is who is striking you. Now Peter was warming himself in the courtyard when a small girl enslaved entered. She confronted Peter and said, You also were with this Jesus of Nazareth. Peter quickly gave a denial. I do not know what you are talking about, he replied and went outside into the gateway. Meanwhile, the cock crowed. The girl followed Peter out and said to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Again, Peter denied knowing Jesus. After a little while, the bystanders said directly to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you speak with a Galilean accent. Then Peter began to swear with an oath, I do not know this person of whom you are speaking. But the cock interrupted him as it crowed for the second time. Immediately, Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, You will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. When morning arrived, all the chief priests, along with the other Roman collaborators, bound Jesus and delivered him over to Pontius Pilate, the imperial Roman governor. Then Judas saw what was happening. He knew that Jesus was doomed, and he repented. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and confessed, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? They responded. That is your affair. Judas threw down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple. Then he went out and hanged himself. Picking up the silver pieces, the chief priest said, It is unlawful to put this silver in the treasury, for it is blood money. Whereupon they used the money to buy the potter's field for the burial of strangers. Therefore, the field is known to this day as the field of blood. Jesus stood before the Roman governor as the accusers made their charge. We found this man perverting our nation, they said. He was forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and proclaiming himself anointed king. The governor asked, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered. You say so. The chief priests were accusing him of many things. Therefore, Pilate again spoke to Jesus. Have you no answer to give? He asked. Look at how many accusations they are making. Jesus astonished Pilate by remaining silent. At that festival, the governor used to release a prisoner, and some were urging Pilate to do so at this time. Now there was a notable rebel in prison with those who had committed murder during the insurrection. His name was Jesus Barabbas. Therefore, the chief priests arranged a demonstration to demand Barabbas. Pilate asked them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus the Anointed One? The demonstrator shouted, Barabbas! Pilate responded, What shall then, what then should I do with Jesus the anointed one? And the crowd shouted, Crucify him! Pilate continued, Are you certain of his guilt? And the crowd took up the chant, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate spoke again, Shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar, cried the demonstrators. Then Pilate agreed to release Jesus Barabbas, but Jesus the anointed one, he handed over to his soldiers for scourging and crucifixion. The soldiers led Jesus away within the governor's palace. There they assembled the whole battalion. They clothed Jesus in royal purple. They set a crown of thorns upon his head and shoved a reed between his fingers for a scepter. They began to mock him by kneeling before him and proclaiming, Hail, King of the Jews! They also spit upon him and smote him on the head with a stick. Then, after mocking him, They took away the purple, returned his own clothes, and brought him out to crucify him. On the road, they met an African named Simon coming in from the countryside. They compelled him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means skull. And there they crucified him. They offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he refused it. His garments they divided among themselves, casting lots for them. And over his head they inscribed the charge against him, the king of the Jews. Also there were two insurrectionists crucified with him, one to his right and one to his left. Those who passed by were shaking their heads in derision and saying, So you would destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself. Come down from the cross. Likewise, the priestly collaborators mocked him, and they said to one another, He saved others, himself he cannot save. 
Let the anointed one, the king of Israel, come down from the cross that he may see and believe. Even the crew, the two that were crucified him with him reviled him. Now from midday there was darkness over the whole land until three in the afternoon. After that hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema shakvatani, words that mean, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders said, Look, he is calling for Elijah. One of them put a sponge full of vinegar on a stick and laid it to his lips. Others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus, having uttered a loud cry, breathed his last breath. 